This morning I'd like to talk to you guys about the Trayvon Martin case. That's the case where neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman shot an unarmed, defenseless black teenager in Sanford, Florida. Now, I don't know whether or not Zimmerman is guilty or not. I don't know how that case is going to turn out. I know that all the evidence is not on the table and that when it's all out there, we'll know one way or another whether or not George Zimmerman should be tried and jailed for murder. They're, they're pressing second-degree murder on him. Now, in relation to that case, what I want to talk about is the blatant lying done by the American news media. Now, I know there are plenty of examples of the media lying, but in this case, it just seems so blatant and it's sad because I wonder how many people just don't even see it. It's going right over their heads. For example, most news stories on Trayvon Martin featured pictures of him from years ago. He looked like a little kid, innocent, baby-faced, harmless. They didn't show the pictures of him most recently on Twitter with a gold tooth and giving his gang signs and chucking the finger to the webcam. They didn't, they didn't show that. Why? Because that doesn't feed into the persona that they want to paint Trayvon Martin as, which is an innocent child who was shot. What's their motive? I don't know. Maybe it's gun control again. Maybe it's just stoking the fire of racism. But without a doubt, they definitely took a biased approach to that. Now, one might say, well, you know, that's just the way it was. That's the way the story broke. But there are other blatant examples of media malfunction where the news industry just went wild. Take, for example, ABC showing a video of George Zimmerman being admitted into the police station and claiming that there was no evidence of any harm being done to him. There was no signs of a struggle, no wounds. Only to have to retract that when other news outlets digitized the footage and said, wait a minute, we do see scuff marks on the back of George Zimmerman's head. There are wounds there. The problem is the public doesn't see that. When I've talked to people about the Trayvon Martin case, they all talk about the ABC footage that showed this guy without injury minutes after the killing in the police station. And though ABC has retracted it, the damage has already been done. People already assume that's the truth because ABC reported it. There's an even worse offense that was put out there by NBC. NBC ran a segment with Zimmerman's 911 call which removed part of Zimmerman's statement in the dispatcher's question. NBC then merged Zimmerman's answer into the previous statement. On the recording played by NBC, Zimmerman was heard saying, this guy looks like he's up to no good. He looks black. This statement would clearly show that there was racial profiling involved at some level, however, NBC lied. The truth was, in the original 911 recording, Zimmerman said, this guy looks like he's up to no good. He's on drugs or something and it's raining. He's just walking around looking about. The 911 operator then asked, okay, and this guy, is he black, white, Hispanic? Zimmerman answered, he looks black. NBC apologized for an error made in the production process and they said they deeply regretted it. But I think what they deeply regretted was they got caught. It's foolishness. Now, I don't know why the American news media felt the need to stoke the fire of racial hatred. I don't know why they sought to drum up this, this case and turn it into something that it may not be. But they did. And it's this kind of... activist reporting and it's this kind of reporting that has destroyed the credibility of the American news media, at least in my eyes. I'm sharing this with you guys in hopes that you'll understand and see and wake up, just like I am. But if not, at least you're aware of how screwed up this case was handled. Well, until next time, happy Jesus Day, God bless, and peace out.